We're moving on from looking at equilibria and reversible reactions in specifically endothermic and exothermic. Now, you've met endothermic and exothermic when we were talking about reversible reactions, where we came across the idea that exothermic means releases heat to the surroundings and making things hotter, and endothermic being taking in heat from the surroundings, making things colder. In this topic, uh, we just build upon that very slightly, and we look at a slightly conceptual level of how we can represent uh, these different reactions. So earlier on in the lesson, you would have had a look at different examples of endothermic and exothermic reactions. I think they're quite obvious, you know, something which makes something colder is endothermic, something which makes something hotter is exothermic. So for example, the self-heating uh, coffee cans or the uh, hand warmers for exothermic and then for endothermic things like sports injury packs. Um, in this part, what we're looking at is how we can represent endothermic and exothermic reactions graphically. And I just want to zoom in and show you uh, these different diagrams and just talk through them with you very, very quickly. So this is a typical exothermic reaction. What you can see is that the reactants have a certain amount of energy stored in their bonds at the start of the chemical reaction. Now, we put a little bit of energy in to allow those chemicals to react. That's called the activation energy. And every chemical reaction has a minimum energy uh, that is the activation energy. Sometimes it's a small little hump to go over, like this one. Sometimes it's a much, much larger hump. It just depends on the individual reaction. So once you've done that, what happens here is all of the bonds in those reactants have been broken. All the atoms are individual now and are able to be rearranged to make a new substance. And when they rearrange, they form new bonds. And making bonds takes in energy as, they, as the substance becomes more stable and we fall down to a lower energy level. And you can see here that the energy overall is going down, and this is where this is exothermic. And this energy difference from here to here is what is released to make the surroundings hotter. Okay. Now, in the other type of reaction, which is the endothermic reaction, you can see down here, what we have here is the opposite. Our products have higher energy than the reactants we started with. So to get to that higher level, we need to put energy in, and that energy comes from the surroundings. And as we take energy away from the surroundings, the surroundings get colder. Okay. Now, the vast majority of chemical reactions are exothermic because remember, in chemistry, everything wants to become a little bit more stable, a little bit more happy and lower in energy. And most chemical reactions get there by releasing energy as a result and therefore being exothermic. But there are a few, um, for example, thermal decomposition. So in thermal decomposition, uh, a good example is calcium carbonate or limestone. If you heat that with a Bunsen burner, it breaks down to make calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And that's an endothermic reaction because actually the carbon dioxide and calcium oxide have a higher energy at the end than the reactants they started with. And the reason the reaction works is because you've put heat in from the surroundings, the energy's taken in to do that change. Okay. So at GCSE, what can you be asked to do? Well, the very typical question is to draw one of these diagrams or label it. And really, all you have to remember is which way round they are. So exo, the products are lower than reactants, and endo, as we see here, the products are higher than reactants. You have to remember to always go up higher than the product line initially for that activation energy and label activation energy on. Now, that quite often causes a few confusions. If I come over here, okay, you can see here we've got activation energy and activation energy, you must always label it from this reactance line all the way to the top of that curve. That's the activation energy. The overall energy change is the difference between the reactants and the products. Okay, so I hope that's explained it somewhat. Next time out, we're going to be looking at how we can do calculations involving these diagrams and how we can make changes um, and predict whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic from the data. Okay. If you have any problems, don't forget to email me um, and your work today is to work through the questions about the applications of exothermic and endothermic, which is on uh, the PowerPoint. And then after that, go on and work through these examples about the different types of energy profile diagram. Okay. I hope that was useful to you.